everyone, it is Pufu here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. With Nintendo dropping a couple of Splatoon 3 teasers in recent weeks, the possibility of bigger Splatoon 3 news is on the horizon. Especially around the time of Splatoon 2's 4th anniversary where we might see a new trailer of sorts. But in the meantime, why don't we go ahead and start some speculation with brand new concepts that I'll be showcasing in today's video. So without further ado, let's get to it. Here we are at our first concept, OLED Model Splatoon 3 Edition. With the recent announcement of the Nintendo Switch OLED, we might even see a possible bundle. Nintendo has done this with the Splatoon 2 bundle, which doesn't really include much. I mean, it's the regular Switch with green and pink Joy-Cons. But hey, they might go all out with the OLED model because look at the Animal Crossing version of the Switch. It's got a white dock and the Joy-Cons are really nice colors. They're pastel blue and pastel green. So with Splatoon 3, why not take a more creative approach? So would it make sense to uh, give the Nintendo Switch OLED model a nice touch of Splatoon 3? Something that isn't just the same old model with yellow and purple Joy-Cons. I mean, I'd still get it, but it's not very Splatoon 3 y Is that even a word? Anyways, here is the mock-up of the Splatoon 3 Nintendo Switch OLED model. I decided to include a couple of noticeable patterns into the dock and the Joy-Cons. The two notable colors of Splatoon 3 are yellow and purple, so it makes sense for us to have two Joy-Cons that represent those colors. But why not also add some color to the thumbsticks themselves? With the yellow Joy-Con, I decided to add the purple thumbstick, and with the purple Joy-Cons, there are yellow thumbsticks. Great contrast, and they look great too. I decided to take a more minimal approach to the design, Something that isn't too crazy like my previous design here, but I decided to still keep that Splatoon 3 look and flair, and that includes the graffiti of the game. Splatoon 3 isn't without its most iconic symbol, the squid symbol. You obviously had to have this on the dock, if it doesn't have it, it isn't Splatoon. So there are a couple splatters here and there, not too much so that it looks too chaotic, but there's enough that you can have a little emblem of the squid right here and it just fits the dock really well. It's pretty simple and it gets the message through. Another thing I've noticed with the Switch OLED is that there's a little border around the white dock and I think that Nintendo could maybe add some color to that border as well. It might add a little nice touch of detail into the dock rather than just keeping it a plain gray because that'd be a little bit boring. So some color to the dock, this is an extra touch that really helps give that Splatoon 3 feeling. Oh my God. Oh my god. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. Before we continue with the video, you should consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I cover all content revolving around Splatoon 3, including discussion, speculation, and most importantly, concepts. Your support will help me continue making Splatoon 3 content and concepts, and I would really appreciate it. But if you gravitate towards making Splatoon 3 concepts instead, check out my Discord server. Links in the description below. Here, we share assets and tips and tricks regarding editing and making Splatoon 3 art. So you might learn a couple things there, or you might even find some assets you need to help boost up your edit from being great as it is already to being even better. So check out my Discord server. And next up we have is our first UI concept of the video, one of the equipment screens. So there's a lot going on here that I'm going to explain to you, so get ready. The overall equipment screen of Splatoon 3 relatively stays the same as Splatoon 2's with a couple minor tweaks and added additions. So we'll first begin with the bottom row section. Right here we have our weapons, head, clothes, shoes, buddy, and other. Now you'll notice that buddy is new. This section mainly focuses on cosmetic and stats revolving around little buddy. You'll be able to customize their hairstyle and maybe even give them little outfits. Now onto the most interesting part of the concept, the weapon selection. There's a lot of weapons to choose from and a couple of bonus challenges that you can take on, so why don't we go ahead and discuss about those. This is a new sloshing machine model that you've seen in the Splatoon 3 trailer with an added brand beside it. Not exactly sure what brand this is, but it was in the trailer, so there's that. The sloshing machine comes with the burst bomb and the ink zooka. Next up we have is the ranged blaster paired with the burst bomb and ink zooka. The splatter shot junior is paired with a splat bomb and the bubbler. 
That's right, the bubbler is retreating back from Splatoon 1, but it functions a little bit differently. Now let's move on to the subs and specials that come in this challenge. You're given the spray can, which allows you to blur your opponent's screen for a brief second. Up next we have is a new variant of dualies. Now, the design of these dualies are based off of something, which I won't say, but if you know what it is, let me know in the comments because she's pretty iconic. <laughs> Anyways, these new dualies are paired with suction bomb antenna missiles. And below that, we have is the princess cannon, but it's sub and special is also the princess cannon. This is more of a joke, obviously. I don't, they're not gonna add this, let's be real here. But beside that is the E-Leader 5K, which comes with this spray cannon Kraken. So you use a spray can to block enemies who try to approach you or flank you so you can run away because they can't see anything. And then you have the Kraken as a sort of a last ditch effort, I guess. Or if someone decides to pop up randomly, you could activate it and protect yourself. Hey, it's a good way to uh, use it against people who try flanking you. Now onto the player themselves. We can see little buddy down here with his mohawk hairstyle. Pretty slick looking in my opinion. And beside the player is the spawn drone. What if you're able to decorate and customize your own spawn drones in Splatoon 3? Every player has their own spawn drone and imagine showing up at the beginning of a match with different stickers on it. These stickers will be earned through achievements. So if you enter a match and you see someone with a particular sticker on their spawn drone, it might indicate that they are a very serious player. Before we go on to our next concept though, there are a lot of Easter eggs hidden in this image. So if you could spot them all, let me know in the comments. Once you see them, you're gonna lose it. Up next, we have our Splatoon 3 weapon renders. These are based on the new upgraded models that are seen in the trailer. Up first is the Sloshing Machine 6000. This comes with the Burst Bombing Zuka, which is completely... Oh, wait, no, it's the same kit. Never mind. <laughs> Next up we have is the Splatter Shot with its Splatoon 3 look. This weapon kit is paired with the Splat Bombing Zuka, a reference to Splatoon 1's kit. And finally, we have is a Splat Bow Render. Up next is a Splatfest concept with brand new UI elements. Here we're given Splatoon 3 stages in their nighttime versions. There's a couple of added UI features as well. First up we have his voice chat. Now obviously, I'm pretty sure a majority of the Splatoon community has collectively agreed that voice chat in the game is not a good idea. Well, let's just say hypothetically that there is voice chat in Splatoon 3. Well, there is a little sign right here that indicates who's talking at the moment. Now over here we have are the different player icons and the weapons that they're using. What is this explanation mark? Well, I'll explain that later, but basically it is a sign indicating that your teammates need your attention for something important. So if you happen to see that, you might want to check out what your teammate wants. The glowing icon is pretty self-explanatory. It just means that someone on the other team or your team has their special ready. And the X, well, that means that they've been splatted. So there's that. And beside that is your special weapon and your subs. Except the special gauge has a couple of added features. So if you do reach to this halfway mark, maybe you're able to use a less powerful version of your special, but it's for a very short time. And then if you reach all the way to the full gauge, then you get to use it at its best potential. So I don't know. They could like have a trade off there. Something like that would be pretty cool. And on to our next concept, which is the most exciting one, a Battle Royale mode. You see, the topic of a Battle Royale in Splatoon has been very interesting. Seems like people want it, and then there are people who absolutely do not want it. I am in kind of the middle ground. I don't really care. As long as there's a brand new mode that really blows everyone away, then I'm honestly fine with that. But let's say there is a Battle Royale mode. So how are you going to pull it off? Well, there's a lot of approaches Nintendo could take but the one that I decided to use as my concept is a little bit strange, but I'll go over it. So here's the basic rule set of the game mode. This brand new Splatoon 3 game mode is called Krill Rush. This eight player battle royale requires you to earn krills to move on to the next wave. If you don't know what a krill is, it is a shrimp, a crustacean? I don't know, it looks like a shrimp, but yeah, it's a crustacean and you know, Splatoon 3 with its whole aquatic theme. It kind of makes sense, <laughs> Krill Rush. <laughs> Anyways, um, the rules are you need to collect various spawn cans scattered throughout the map to help you splat opponents. These cans may include a set number of subs, specials, armor, abilities, or buffed up names. Splatting and staying alive will earn you krills, while being splatted loses you krills. 
you are ranked based on the amount of crows you have. So at the, at the end of each wave, which lasts approximately 50 seconds, the player in last place will be eliminated. Players respawn much faster in this mode, and the game ends on the seventh wave, in which the last two players duel it out on a one-on-one. -on -one. So that sums up the basic rules of Crow Rush, but I'll go more in depth about what happens. So between each wave, there might be a 10 second sort of break time to help you regain territory. With this game mode, maps will be given a bigger expansion to give space between each player. At the end of every wave, there is a short 10 second break, kind of like Salmon Run, to allow you to regain control. The krills you have at the end of every wave will not be carried over to the next. So don't get too cocky now because you need to perform the best you can in every single wave or else you're gonna get eliminated. Our next concept is Little Buddy, and this time you're able to level him up. Now, the way you do it is a little bit questionable by feeding him power eggs. Um, that, that, yeah, you, you feed him his own kind. Imagine Little Buddy had a skill tree which you're able to assign a different class to him. Hey, if you want Little Buddy to become a Stinger, well, you can do that. Or if you want Little Buddy to become a Steelhead, well, then he becomes a Steelhead. Or if you want to become a Steel Eel, well, that's a possibility. Whatever you assign to him, Little Buddy can become once you level him up to a certain level. So he could branch off into different skill sets. Might come in handy when you're playing the single player campaign, which I'll talk about in another video. So subscribe to my channel for that if you want to see more single player content, which I will cover soon. And having the ability to level up Little Buddy would add so much depth to the game. And this concludes our video. So until next time, Poofu offline. Hey, yo, I look like Pearl, right?